Hi, my name is Alan Sands, and I'm sitting inside the Global Lounge at the University of British Columbia. Welcome to the Global Politics Instructional Video Series. In this series, we are looking at the key concepts in the study of global politics and international relations. Today, we're going to look at imperialism. Now, obviously, imperialism is a huge phenomenon, a global phenomenon, a deeply historical phenomenon, cultural, economic, and political. Imperialism also has a very bad name today, and justifiably so. But in the past, imperialism was a very common experience. And because so much of the imperial legacy is still with us today in the study of contemporary global politics, we've got to take a good look at imperialism and how it informs our world today. So let's get started with imperialism. Imperialism. Now, there's many dictionary definitions of imperialism, and you can use any one you like, but for our purposes here, we're going to call imperialism an extension by one country of its authority over another territory. So let me draw an imperial power here. So this is our imperial power. And this imperial power is extending its authority or its control over another territory, which we will call a colony. Now, uh, history varies, historical experience varies, but all empires uh, had a set of characteristics. And for the most part, uh, their ability and their mechanisms of control over their colonies basically centered on three different um, qualities or characteristics. The first of these was political. Now, political control was obviously uh, exercised mostly by outright conquest or occupation. Uh, military takeover and control of the territory of the colony. But it also involved local allies and an attempt to cultivate local elites using a combination of coercion and reward. And all of these mechanisms then were part of the imperial power exercising political and administrative control over the colony. The second instrument of control was economic. And in imperial systems, the economy of the colony serves the interests of the imperial power. So the wealth of the colony, all of its resources, its labor, its agriculture, is extracted and brought to the imperial power. It's not used for the benefit of the colony or for the people who live in the colony. In addition, the colonies were never really free to trade with whoever they wished. The colonies, in fact, were bound only to trade with the imperial power or perhaps other colonies of that same imperial power. So we're talking about a very extensive level of economic control over the colony by the imperial power. The third instrument of control was social. And social control included things like language, education, the arts, and in most cases, the imperial power attempted to suppress or even, in fact, destroy the local culture and customs of the people. Again, another instrument of social control. Uh, there was also the imposition of ideas from the imperial power to the colony. Uh, ideas like racism, religion, capitalism. All of these things became part of the structure of control by the imperial power over the colony. Now, obviously, this kind of history has had a profound legacy, and we call this the post-colonial legacy. And what that really means is that for countries emerging into independence after having been colonies for so long, they immediately faced a whole set of challenges. Uh, political challenges, including how to, to govern themselves effectively. Economic challenges included how to develop their economy when for so long their entire economic interests 
were tied up with serving an imperial power. And suddenly, they had to try and devise an economic structure, an economic framework that would serve their own interests. From a social perspective, the post-colonial legacy has left behind an enormous amount of issues related to language, education, uh, the arts, uh, the role of culture, the role of religion in these societies. So today, imperialism continues to cast a very long shadow in global politics. So that was imperialism. Now, today, there is an awful lot of discussion of something called neo-imperialism. And what neo-imperialism is, is the suggestion that imperialism continues to be a reality around the world today, except we don't see uh, overt or direct military occupation and rule for long periods of time. Instead, neo-imperialism is all about structures of control. And these structures are international institutions like the World Bank or the International Monetary Fund. Uh, in other cases, it's multinational corporations that exert neo-imperial influence around the world. Some even suggest that the whole idea of liberal free market economics is itself part of a neo-imperial structure of our world today. So even though imperialism is largely seen as a historical uh, phenomenon, albeit one that is still very relevant today, many make the argument that we're still living in a world characterized by neo-imperialism. I don't know what you think, but I think this is one of the most interesting questions of our time. I hope you enjoyed this video. Join me next time.